All my businesses have failed, but guess what? I finally cracked the code. As you guys have seen many of my videos, I've done so many different things. And believe it or not, there are people out there who will start a business and do pretty well within the first time, the second time. For me, and I think the average person, it takes a while, honestly, because a lot of what ends up happening is really just experience, right? Thinking back now with everything that I've learned, I feel like every business that I've done, I could have made it work. Really, I really could have made it work. There's really no reason why I couldn't have. There's various reasons why I didn't, right? Maybe I gave up too soon. I didn't know enough. I had a lack of experience in not just business, but in that industry. At the end of the day, those three things alone, if I would have stuck to it long enough, I could have made it work. Regardless, it's okay. You know why? Because I ended up starting an Amazon service agency where I help hundreds of people manage their Amazon store. How did that even happen? How did I go from having a clothing line, having a tax business, having an e-commerce coffee company, trying to flip and wholesale real estate, and the list keeps going, right? How did I end up here? Well, again, if we go back a few years, you guys remember, I was flipping real estate from between 2017 to 2019, and right after I flipped one house, right after I hosted for about two, three months, and I pretty much just gave up, I was like, okay, well, what am I gonna do? Yeah, we're back to the drawing board. And you know what? I love Instagram. I love social media because if it wasn't for social media, I would not have been doing all these things. And again, social media brought a new opportunity to me. So I don't know what I was doing. I was scrolling through my phone, maybe at work, maybe at home. And literally somehow, somewhere, I think around that time, I started going to networking events. And this is why it was important for me. And this is why it was good. Although there are reasonings and things of why not to go to networking events, if you don't have the skills, you couldn't meet that one person that will just completely change your life. And that is what literally happened to me. So I went to a networking event and I started following these guys who were talking about e-commerce and Amazon. I've always had a big fascination with e-commerce, which is why I went in with the coffee company with my friend, but I still didn't know enough, right? And there was a whole bunch of other things that I had no idea about still. I met these guys who were basically selling on Amazon, right? They look super young. They look like they made money, but I still didn't really understand what they were doing. So what I ended up doing is I followed them on Instagram. A couple days go by, a couple weeks go on, and I start following more than one guy, more than a couple guys on Instagram that all sell on Amazon. And I'm like, okay, what is this, right? Like all they do is talk about Amazon. They live in a penthouse. They're under 25 years old. They drive exotic cars. They have crazy watches. Clearly there is something off right here, right? I was like 30 years old and I'm like, how are these guys five plus years, five to 10 years younger than me making all this money? Or at least that's what it looked like. So obviously it grabbed my attention, literally flashing things out there. I mean, gets your attention. That's how it got me. I start following them. And obviously I'm looking at all these things. I'm like, how are these guys doing it? Like what, what is going on right here? Right. Keep in mind back at that time, I was still struggling financially. I was still only making $50,000 a year. I was living at my parents' house, literally living in their garage, right? A converted garage. Trying to figure out what I was going to do. I was already heavily in debt, right? After flipping that real estate property over easily six figures in debt. I think it was somewhere around $150,000. How was I going to get out of that hole? How was I even going to get started on Amazon with no money? Well, I'm somebody who believes I can do anything and I'm going to figure it out no matter how hard it feels or how much my heart hurts to try and even put myself in that position. So I decided at that moment, I'm going to do Amazon, right? I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. So as time goes on, these guys start talking about, you know, them managing my Amazon service store. And I'm like, okay, well, that sounds kind of cool. They claim that they can make X amount of money. And I was like, fine, you know, let's make it happen. Remember, I was already about $150,000 in debt, but yet I decided I was going to invest a portion some money into their service to basically them manage an Amazon store for me. I had no idea what that was, right? So what I did a little crazy and a lot of people thought I was crazy is I invested another $23,000 for them to manage a store for me. Again, having very little knowledge of the business, not knowing exactly how was it even going to work? What exactly it entailed of? I got caught into the dream. I saw these guys driving flashy cars. And I figured like, well, if it worked for them, why wouldn't it work for me? Right? Again, I went all in. And here's the thing, guys, like this is what I keep talking about in a lot of videos is whatever you choose, you just have to go all in. Even even if you fail, it doesn't matter. You have to go all in every single time. So that's what I did. I poured money in, they started running the store, but I took it a step further, right? I didn't just allow them to manage the store for me. I was like, you know what? If these guys are making this amount of money, why can't I do the same thing? Why can't I offer a service just like them? I knew very little. I understood how it worked. I invested the money with them, but at the same time, I invested into multiple courses with them and with other people. And I spent anywhere between one and $3,000 to multiple courses to basically understand and learn the business, right? How was I really going to learn this? And I will say this, it was the best thing. I ever did in my life, 100% hands down, because not only was I able to create this agency, not only have I been able to make multiple seven figures, but at the same time, I actually met one of my best friends who till this day, I consider one of my best friends, he's literally like a brother to me. And I met him in one of these courses. And honestly, like even when I was going through these courses, it, it, it was it was chaotic. Like it was really, really chaotic because what I will say is that it brought a lot of hope back into me, right? It, I met a lot of amazing guys and girls who were trying to get involved in e-commerce, trying to understand the business, trying to do the exact same thing that I was doing. And honestly, it was pretty surreal when I went to 
one of these courses because it was an in-person one. One of the guys teaching this course, which you guys can find his Instagram, his name is Kenzo. He's 21 years old today, I think. At the time, I think he was like 16 years old. 16 years old, wearing Balenciaga shoes, driving a Ferrari. I was like, this blows my mind. But sure enough, he knew what he was talking about. He knew what he was doing. Like, he is a go-getter. Like, I have so much respect for him because at 16 years old, I was lost as a puppy. But I learned a lot from him on what Amazon Hostel FBA was. I learned about what dropshipping was to another course. Next thing you know, right, I have my Amazon store running for me. Somebody is running dropshipping on it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to open up a second store so that I can do Amazon FBA, just like Kenzo does, just like all these other big Amazon sellers do. Because why not, right? Why not have multiple streams of income through the same industry? It's a great idea, right? So I open up a second store. I'm running multiple stores. And guess what? Here we go. Again, through the exact same cycle. Something bad always goes wrong. At the time, I'm still trying to comprehend that. I'm still trying to learn what business really is i'm still trying to understand like that is just part of the game like, you have to be ruthless to a certain degree just kind of take it and just kind of move on do what you got to do make it happen it is what it is and i was like well i gotta buy inventory now how am i gonna do that right remember hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt invested my last twenty thousand dollars that i had as my ultimate ultimate cash reserves into this investment a little bit extra that i kept saving every single month to get into these courses i still have to buy inventory right how else was i gonna sell Luckily, through the dropshipping model, I did not need to buy inventory. I could just use credit cards. Let me rephrase that. I had to buy inventory, but not with my own money. I was able to use credit cards, right? I'm like, okay, I got two Amazon stores. One is dropshipping and it's running. I got a second one where I'm doing Amazon wholesale. I'm managing it on my own. So I started doing my product research. Now I got to buy inventory, right? But before I buy inventory, I'm about two or three months in, got a really good understanding of the business model. I've learned a ton. I'm all in on it. And then I learned Amazon does not allow you to have two Amazon stores. And I'm like, wait, what? What? what wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what does that mean? Luckily, I was, you know, in a small mastermind, you can say, of people who were, were learning the business, right? So it was a group of people where we can just kind of go back and forth. To do that is when I first learned that you couldn't have multiple stores. After speaking to somebody who had a lot more experience than me, they told me, I'm sorry to tell you, but Amazon already knows you have two stores. You're pretty much screwed. And I was like, wait, hold on. What, do you, what does that mean? He pretty much said, you might be okay right now, but at some point, Amazon will get you. And sure enough, they did. I think about a month or a few weeks after that, Amazon ends up suspending my stores, right? So I went from having two stores, I invested $23,000 and guess what? Let me top it off a little bit. About a week right before Amazon suspended both of my stores, I had bought inventory, about $5,000 worth, and I send it into Amazon's Fulfillment Center. I had just started selling a couple of units, and then both my stores go down. It was one of the worst moments of my life. I'm not going to lie. Keep in mind, $150,000 in debt. I'm living in my parents' house with my wife and my daughter. I invest my last twenty-five dollars to $30,000 of cash for my ultimate, ultimate reserve into not only a store to be managed for me, but for inventory to be managed on the wholesale side and everything just disappears. At that moment, I realized I'm like, okay, how am I even gonna get out of this? How am I gonna start this management service business when I don't even have a store running myself? Well, it was honestly one of the best things that ever happened in my life because about a month into this, I was trying to figure out everything that I could. The company that was managing the store for me was helping very, very little. Like it, it put me in a position where I had to just take things to my own hands and figure it out. Keep in mind, I could have very easily given up at that moment. I could have very easily just said, I'm done with this and I would have probably still been working at my nine to five where I was at at the time and many times it crossed my mind many times I thought about quitting many times I thought about you know what maybe I should get a second job but my friend at the time David who's not one of my best friends I'm telling me bro like you are so close like something keeps telling me for you not to stop like you have to figure it out and this is I'm not exactly sure somewhere between one or three months after my counselor suspended where I just kept digging and digging and digging I learned so much about the business like a crazy amount of information like it was just crazy two months into it, I was like, okay, I think I gotta go back to Amazon. Like something is telling me to go back. At the end of the day, I went into Amazon back again, again, heavy, all in, learning more and more and more networking, learning from different people in the industry, trying to get more information. Like, what am I missing? Why am I not getting these stores back? Sure enough, here we go. Instagram coming in clutch. I meet this guy named Ricky. Never met him in my life. Never met him in person. Followed him on Instagram. He followed me back. Start messaging him back and forth. We get on a phone call and I tell him my situation, what is going on. He's like, oh, really? He's like, that's easy to fix. He's like, I know this guy who can help you fix your store. And I'm like, all right, cool. Who, who is he? And he's like, oh, he's this Filipino guy. His name is Jerome. He's really, really good. And the crazy part is this guy lives in Armenia. Out of all places a filipino guy who i've never met out in armenia i message him and i'm like hey um this is my situation so and so told me to hit you up that you can help me get my store back he hits me up he responds right away we get on a call he dropped so much knowledge on me that i was kind of i was just blown away i was like 
damn, this guy knows what he's talking about. Well, guess what? It was $3,000 to help get my accounts recovered. I was literally already like at the tipping point. But one thing I, I have learned from entrepreneurship is that you're always just one step away, one small step away from like really cracking it. So I kept reminding myself of that. I'm like, okay, well, we've taken dozens of steps into this already. We've learned a ton. We keep figuring things out. We're getting further ahead. Like maybe this is the next one. I find another $3,000 and I pay him. Keep in mind what really helped me at that time, because I know I've said this before already, that I was limited on capital. I was living in my parents' house. So we were saving a lot of money on a monthly basis where I can keep doing these crazy things or I can keep pouring money into this business. Luckily, my wife kept supporting me on this. She never literally gave me grief, except for this one thing. I was so consumed by this that I was not paying attention to her, right? I was not taking care of her. We're not going out on dates. I wasn't treating her well. I was so stressed all the time. That was probably one of the worst times that we had as a couple, but she always supported me. She just tell me, do what you got to do, figure it out. Like she didn't care. Like she believed in me. And you know, again, I paid this guy and guess what? He actually recovered the accounts. It was crazy. So just we're about six, nine months into this after my accounts and suspended. I have learned probably way more than the average person ever learned about selling on Amazon because I was so consumed by it. I did not have to spend time researching products and buying them and sourcing them. I didn't have to spend time any of that. I just kept learning more and more about the industry, more about wholesale, more about dropshipping, more about VAs, more about business, more about just what it would really take to build out an agency, right? If I can really get my stores back, get them up and running, get them selling. Like I learned so much that by the time I got my stores back, I had just about everything to start an agency. I didn't quite start it yet, obviously. I kept focusing on what I was doing. I got my stores back, stores got up and running. I started selling and it was freaking crazy. It was, it was one of the best moments of my life. And I was like, damn, David was right. That voice inside my head was right. My wife was right. Like I just had to keep going and I cracked it again. At the time, I still was not making crazy money. I'm not going to say I was making 10, 20, $30,000 per month, but it got the ball rolling, right? It started building that momentum. And that is really what you want, right? With anything that you do, momentum is one of the key things, whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you're trying to learn how to day trade, whether you're trying to do anything, that momentum is really what's going to get you there because it's what's going to help you keep going. And that's what helped me keep going, right? I got my stores back, stores started selling. I started making money started making $500 a month, $1,000 a month, $3,000 a month. It was one of the best times ever. And I, that's when I finally realized I was like, wow, like I'm, I'm actually making it happen. Like this is crazy. And if there's anything ways that I can summarize, what are the key things to that help help me go from making three, four $4,000 per month from working at a bank to now making anywhere from 50 to a quarter million per month. It's just not giving up. You just got to keep going. Like there's really no way around it. Like things are going to get tough. Things are going to get hard. But as long as you're willing to keep taking that extra step forward, you're going to figure it out. I guarantee you, you will crack it. You will crack that code and once you do you'll be living the best version of your life thank you guys again for tuning into my channel if you guys are looking for a company to manage your amazon fba store please click the link below and my team will get back to you thank you